All right, now let's finish working example five. All right, now we're working with this equation, and we're trying to find the x and y intercepts. However, remember, this is to help out those of us who may be confused. Remember, this is like saying the e is like your y, and the t is like your x. In other words, the y is dependent upon the, the, uh, the x. Okay, so now if we're going to find the intercepts then, if we're going to find this intercept or the x-intercept, we got to make this equal to zero. And that's what they did there. All right. So they ended up with zero is equal to 650t minus 13,000. Okay. Now, we want to get t by itself. So we're back at a two-step equation, multiplication and subtraction. So we start with subtraction first. So we say plus 13,000 on this side and plus 13,000 on this side. So now what's 0 plus 13,000? That's going to be 13,000. And that's going to be equal to 650t because these cancel out, negative and positive. And that's how they got that. And then the last step to get the t by itself, now we have a one-step equation involving multiplication. So what's the opposite or the inverse of multiplication? Division. So we divide both sides by 650. And that's how we come out with the y-intercept equaling 20. So t is equal to 20. And don't forget 650 divided by 650, that's 1. So you end up with 1t. And then you got 13,000 divided by 650, that's 20. Okay, now to find the y-intercept, or the e in this case, we must set the t or the x equal to 0. So to find this intercept, this must go to 0. So we get e is equal to 650 times 0 minus 13,000. We wrote that here and here, so you can see the full thing in full detail. All right, now, what is 650 times 0? That's going to be 0, so that's gone. So what are you left with? A negative 13,000. So E is equal to a negative 13,000. Don't forget, this is really saying your y-intercept, and this is really saying your x-intercept. So you know that time is an independent variable, and you know that time t is an independent variable. And you know that E is the dependent variable. Name intercepts. Because the t is the independent variable, the horizontal axis is the t-axis, and you refer to the t-intercept of the graph of the function. Similarly, the vertical axis is the e-axis, and you refer to the e-intercept. The t-intercept represents the number of minutes the submersible takes to reach an elevation of zero feet. That's sea level. The E-intercept represents the elevation of the submersible after zero minutes, the time the ascent begins. Step two, graph the function using intercepts. All right, so we graph our intercepts. Um, X is zero when Y is a negative 1,300. 13,000, excuse me. And here, X is 20 when Y is zero. The submersible starts at an elevation of a negative 13,000 feet and ascends to an elevation of zero feet. So the range of the function is E for elevation is greater than or equal to a negative 13,000 and E is less than or equal to zero, sea level. From the graph, you can see that the domain of the function is T is greater than or equal to zero and T is less than or equal to 20. Once again, we read from inside out, inside out, inside out, inside out. So once again, t is greater than or equal to 0, and t is less than or equal to 20. One more thing to take note of. Notice that this graph is occurring in the fourth quadrant. See the negative values for y and the positive values for x. This is the fourth quadrant. In other words, 
you're graphing right here. A lot of kids think that you're in the first quadrant, and that's what makes them get confused. But you're actually in the fourth quadrant. So in other words, if your quadrants were like so, all right, that's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. This is where this graph is. It's in quadrant four. Negative values for y and positive values for x. And notice how they label going across the top there. They're labeling here and there. Okay. All right, that concludes today's lesson.